This right here is a third generation uh, Tesla wall connector and it is one of the options you could use to level two charge your Tesla at your house or your residence wherever you want to install it, right? The other option being the Tesla mobile connector, uh, which you can use to level charge if you connect it to a 50 amp circuit, almost like a wall uh, dryer outlet type deal for electric dryers. But anyways, they do not include this, nor the mobile charger on new Teslas anymore. So you will have to purchase either option, right? The mobile charger tent is designed to really be just carried with the car, just in case you go somewhere, uh, you can just plug it in and type charge it. But this is really more of a permanent installation. And if you want to level two charge at home, I would highly recommend getting this one. Yes, it does cost more, but this one allows you uh, to charge uh, using about 48 amps, right? So 48 amps at about 240 volts is about 12 kilowatt hours, which is quite a lot, right? So before we get too far into it, let's go ahead and talk about, you know, level two charging this, right? Mainly because this is, uh, has a nice design. It's a permanent installation designed, uh, designed to be permanently installed and not really moved afterwards. But in order to install this, I would highly recommend you check your breaker box and make sure that you have capacity in your breaker box uh, for two things. One is the breaker space capacity so that you can add a two pole breaker in there and the breaker box or the service panel, so to say, uh, has capacity for 60 amps, right? So uh, in the US, at least where I'm at, a lot of the service to the homes are either about 100 amps or 200 amps, okay? So if you have a 100 amp service to your panel or main panel, the chances most likely are you probably don't have enough service uh, capability inside of your panel, even if you have the space for a 60 amp breaker or 60 amp circuit or another addition, right? Mainly because a 100 amp panel, let's just say that you your capacity is at 100, which would mean you're probably only using maybe about 40 amps of that service, right? So there's some pro houses that probably can do that, but if you wanna get 60 amps, you probably aren't, right? So if you're using, or if your house or your residence has electric dryer, electric stove, electric, all of this stuff, most likely you will not have capacity with for this at 60 amps um, with the 100 amp service. But if you have a 200 amp service, you probably can, right? Obviously there's higher uh, different uh, areas will have different kinds of service to their panel, but you need two things the capacity to the panel and also the space in the panel for the two pole breakers. So uh, you can run this, like I said, with a lower uh, amp breakers, but you will not be able to charge at the maximum rate, which is 48 amps. And that's all outlined inside the manual. If you wanna look at it, go take a look. We'll see if we can throw it up, if we can find it. But anyways, the point is what we're going to do is we're going to install two of these, one up to the uh, off-grid solar system and two, the second one, to the uh, main panel, uh, mainly just in case uh, we wanna try testing some things. And also our off-grid system cannot charge or output the full 60 amps. We're gonna fix that sometime later, but to maximally charge the Tesla at its maximum capability using this wall connector, right? So with that being said, let's get into it. All right, so when you open it, it comes with a nice little thank you note. Say thank you for accelerating the world transition sustainable energy. It says it in multiple different languages. It includes this nice looking, uh, looks like almost like a glass type charger, right? And there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here, not too much, right? But all the stuff you would need in order to get started, right? So let's go ahead and take a look. Obviously have the charger unit itself comes with a little uh, foam piece so that you can nicely tug it up. Just a little case here, get rid of that guy, get rid of that. And this is what you get in the box. So you got this, let's take this out. Uh, you have obviously the wall connector customer setup. So if you were gonna set it up in your own house, you probably wanna scan this because you're the customer and you're setting it up. But if you're more 
uh, or hiring it out to somebody else to get it, they would scan this QR code on here, mainly because uh, it, it says place this label on the breaker for customer setup. So maybe you put that on the breaker. But if you hired a, uh, let's say third party connector or a, or a, a electrician to hire, they'll probably scan all of this stuff to figure out what to do. But anyways, the point is, it also has a uh, wall mounting template, which comes here. And I do know that it comes with some screws here. Let's see if we can find it. I don't know where the screws are, but for some reason, uh, they are not in this box. But it does come with obviously this cable attached to it. So it's not in this box, which means the screws and the special bit for it are probably inside of there. So let's get rid of that. Uh, this thing comes with a little nice uh, plastic piece so that you can kind of pull this and it opens up, right? So if you pull this and open it up, here are the screws. We can take a closer look at this, but this has uh, screws and it has a special driver for the screws. So make sure you do not lose this because the special bit and the screws to attach this are all in here. So let's take a look at the quick start guide and the quick start guide is really all you really need to get to set this up right so if you look at it there are multiple options to install this right so this is outdoor rated you can install it outside but let's look at the option so the option is your uh, uh, wire in, into the charger can come in through the top or it can come in through the bottom or it can come in from the left uh, corner here or the right corner here but either way, it can come in from all sides, right? So that's interesting, mainly because uh, it's one panel that you can mount on pretty much almost any surface and get the wire ran in any direction. We'll take a better look at that, right? But it's pretty straightforward, right? So the step one here says, you, you, if you're gonna, depending on which one you do, you just follow the instructions this way until it gets to step five, then it's pretty much all the same for every uh, method of installation, right? So uh, depending on which way you do it, you always want to create almost like a service loop, right? So if it comes in through the top, make a service loop, bring it around this way, comes in from the bottom, make a service loop this way, this part service loop, this part service loop, and then you have to tie it off here, right? So uh, you do also want to strip it. <clears throat> uh, it says here about half an inch, it was about 13 millimeters, and you want to torque it, it or put it into these terminals and then torque it to 50 inch pounds. If you don't know what that is, that's 5.6 Newton meters. And I would highly recommend you go get a, a torque driver, mainly because on stuff like this, you do have to make sure you have a solid connection or else it would like be a fire hazard or molting plastic hazard or any of that. And then when you get to this step and you do all of that, you put the panel or you mount the wall connector to the base plate and then you put the four screws in, you click, click the breaker on, then you scan it and get it all connected with the app, right? So that's all pretty straightforward. This here is a mounting uh, template as you would see for this. You can screw it in any one of the six holes or two of the six holes, I guess, but one on top and one on the bottom is exactly what they recommend. As you can see right here, right so that's what you would do uh, mine has a little sticker in here but i'm just going to go ahead and cover this up so you can see it this way but if you do see it this way right so the bottom part or the top part right and the bottom part already have these like little plastic or rubber grommets in there uh, so you don't have to worry about drilling those out but if you were going to bring your service in right from either here or here you would have to drill these out you probably want to get a step bit to drill those out um, because that's exactly what they recommend. It even tells you in here like a strip gauge and here are the parts where you would torque it down. So if you look at it closely, not sure if it's gonna come out well in here, there are uh, terminal blocks right there that you put the screws into, right? And then you can, or the wire into, and then you can torque it down accordingly. So if you take this out, right, you could bring your service in through here and then uh, just bring the wire up here, get it in, but that's how that would work. Let's go ahead and take a look at the special screw bit and the screws that you get with this, mainly because the screws are interesting. So when you get this, do not lose this bit. I, even after you finish installing it, I would highly recommend you keep it in the box or like tape it somewhere, mainly because if you ever have a problem with this and you need this simpler, take it off, you're gonna need this bit. So this bit, 
drives uh, these uh, screws in for the mounting the top part, this top part to the base plate. So as you can see here, right, you would mount uh, your base plate on there and then when it installs here like so there are two screws on the top and two screws on the bottom uh, to secure this cover unit into this base plate and when you put the uh, plates on top into each other the spade terminals will connect here here and here right so that you can get the connection uh, going from the base plate to there and that works pretty solid it's a much better design than their second generation and the first generation mainly because they had signal wires to cross into didn't have a lot of space this is way easier right so uh, the parts you would mount it on the top or screw in the base plate are going to be see these three holes here or these three holes here you would just pick one uh, from here and one from here that's how you would recommend it and you would install that using this screw right to here so this one I would highly recommend using a square Robertson drive right uh, just doing it over a Phillips head just isn't ideal mainly you're just gonna have a high chance of stripping it I'll get a square head drive to drive that in all right so like I mentioned this is designed to be outdoor rated you can't install it outside there is a rubber uh, rubberized gasket as you can see that goes all the way around here uh, so when you install it tight you want to push it together with the base plate and then uh, put the screws in right but other than that that's how this really works okay uh, there's a little bar here that has little green led lights that pop up it doesn't say show on here but uh, depending on what breaker you have it connected to and then when you set it up you can select which one you have it'll tell you how much pretty much depending on the green led bar at what charge rate you could probably get from it so if you look at it here here's all the uh, other quick start guide information stuff that you need here's the stuff that it comes with here's the other stuff that you need and they're pretty much saying make sure you install it somewhere within this part where you, the cable can reach this part of the car because the charger port for the car is right here on the driver's side rear right so a uh, recommended height is about about 60 inches which is about here uh you know so make sure you take that into account the other thing to note here is that um this has gfci built into it so here's one issue we ran into if you're using uh, a one inch conduit and you want to install that uh, threaded end up in here make sure you get like an electrician step bit and not like this kind because you do need to enlarge this hole for that a uh, one inch uh, conduit threaded end to fit in if you're using a smaller one like three quarters you probably don't need to do that but if you're using one inch you definitely need to enlarge it so here's the problem this is a step bit that can drill or increase size up to one and three eighths as you can see right there but the problem is it's too long and this part sticking out blocks uh, you from getting the step bit all the way in right so as you can see right here it's blocking you from getting all the way to the size that you need. So uh, make sure you get the bigger, uh, fatter electrician style one because that one won't have this problem because it only be maybe about this far. But I was able to get it done using a combination of this and uh, a spade bit. So just getting it enlarged enough so that the spade bit can go inside and start boring it out is one that I uh, was able to get it done with. But just wanted to point this out because I'm sure somebody else will run into this issue. Uh, what Tesla could probably do in the future is just make this part removable right or this part removable or some part removable such that there's no like limitation on drilling that out but for people using one inch conduit that you want to get that bit in you're going to have a problem so here we have the base plate installed now i mentioned earlier i'm using one inch conduit and had to enlarge the hole up here uh here is the threaded end that i put in here uh, make sure you buy this nut and the bushing because they are sold separately unless somehow you find it as a kit uh, but the nut really secures the uh, uh, threaded end in here and this little anti-shaping bushing insulated bushing whatever you want to call it uh pretty much just screws onto the end of that uh, just to help with the chafing and you know wire management and all that kind of fun stuff right so uh, the two cup or the three copper wires is really six two uh, copper wires are coming in through here with the ground uh, wrapping around here with like a J loop or a service loop type right and then it screws into these terminal blocks here okay 
so there is a strip gauge on how much you need to strip, put it up in here. In this situation, it doesn't really matter which line is line one and line two, especially because they're both hot legs from uh, your panel. And because it's gonna be split phase, it's not really all that critical which one goes where, okay? It really doesn't matter in this case or whenever you're installing this. If you're installing like a three phase one or something like that or a GB one, it's gonna be different. That one may matter, but in US split phase 120 or 240, it doesn't matter. The ground goes in here and that's the only really critical part you need to put on here. Uh, so we mounted our base plate to this piece of MDF board uh, between the two uh, garage panels. And then, uh, like I said, the conduit's coming down in here. And then we mounted the base plate using uh, pan head screws right here, not the screws that came with the Tesla charger because those were too long for this application. Uh, but, you know, this is going to be pretty sturdy enough because the board is mounted to two other boards. And then there's also a board in this crevice down here to really give it uh, a good stability so uh we also just covered up the screws with the electrical tape just because you know it is a metal screw you don't need to do that we just went ahead and did that for extra measure and another thing we did for extra measure is just put this dense uh foam in here it's like a packing foam mainly because this corner is the same as this corner right here and as you can see it's pretty sharp now as you're pulling the wire you know stripping it cutting it and just pushing it around, bending it. It was kind of chafing up the wire a little bit and I didn't like that. So we just put a piece of dense foam in there to break the surface between here, this, this metal sharp corner and the wires, right? So somebody's probably gonna say something, oh, don't do that. But you know, I went ahead and did that. So, you know, take that with through gain of salt. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just telling you that I did it, all right? So the other critical part comes in here as you go here, make sure you tie it off zip tie here so it doesn't try to come back out when you install the top wall connector and you strip it off and you put it in here. This, you need to use the special bit that comes with the installation kit and make sure you get a torque driver. And I said torque driver, not a torque wrench, mainly because the only thing that you get in the uh, kit is this little uh, bit here. So this bit, it's almost like a hex pentalobe type style bit right and then um you need to torque it down to 50 inch pounds as it says right there you probably can't see it but it says torque it down to 50 inch pounds so uh i'm using a torque driver here if you want to get this one i'll draw a link in the description below but we torqued it down to 50 inch pounds as you can see right here properly uh make sure it's super critical the most important thing you could do in here is to besides wire it correctly is to torque down the connections because it is going to be running a lot of amperage right so like i said you only get this bit right so you need something to run the bit other than that uh, the installation here is pretty simple. Uh, wire comes through there. If I didn't mention earlier, this is 6-2 copper wire. What that really means is there's two uh, hot carrying conductors, right? And plus the ground. So that's how they really uh, talk about it. If, the, if you talk about like Romex and things like that, or you can just run individual wires and stuff like that. But like I said, make sure you're using six gauge wire for your hot legs, especially if you want to try to get the 40, the full 48 amps out of this, right? So now what you need to do is just put the wall connector on top of the base plate and it will connect using uh, the terminals here. Make sure these are clear of debris and stuff and just in case you were drilling stuff and debris got in there because that needs to make a secure connection. And here we go. So we plugged in the charger for the first time and this one is now connected to the grid system and it's set with the 60 amp breaker on one end and now it's set to charge at the maximum rate that it's allowed which is 48 amps as you can see here roughly around 11 kilowatts is being delivered 11 one and a half kind of rounds up to 12 depending on what screen you're on so uh right here charging the tesla level two speed 240 volts split phase with 48 amps being delivered to the vehicle using this charger.